time during development? I'd be shocked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but there are other people for whom that is possible. Okay. And okay. they're not running my video driver yet. We will be give it them. Yeah. So we need to come up with a we need to come up with a mechanism to group sessions, and C groups is one possible way. What about what about shared open file descriptors? How about if console kit simply kept the file descriptor open? That well, the trouble with that is that console kit needs to know about all of the input devices that anybody might hold. Well, it, true, except you could simply, in order to open an input device, you ask console kit to open it for you and hand you the FD. Does it help? That is right. help. Yeah, that doesn't help because if you do that, it doesn't help you. You still need some way of being able to tell that FD that it doesn't get into it. Yeah, kernel still No, that's, it. that's my point. You have shared open file descriptors, which means I have a reference in console kit to the FD that is also open over there, which then means I can take that FD and say yeah. that FD is the one that now gets input <coughs> and distinguish it from other FDs open to the same input device. So yeah, one, 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 one issue with that, of course, is that then all of a sudden the answer depends on the console kit, which kind of sucks. Or, or whatever other process you does know. this. It doesn't have to be console kit. It depends on whatever well, process is running. Part some other input holder even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thing that opens file descriptors and manages access to them. Doesn't yeah. console kit already have to know what, what input devices you might care about so that it can determine which it should, but it doesn't. It doesn't even care about them because yeah. the server is root, so it doesn't have to. Right. But it now right. So it has to fix that. But it has to console kit ignores them right now. It doesn't need to do anything about it now because the X server so manages yeah. control of the input devices by itself. Right, but we're going to have to fix that. Right. Oh, there is another thing that uh, for which it's pretty that's very important just uh, I was reading the like previous generation code ID for the DSD with the run from smart parameter and 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 the run from smart parameter you, you stop yourself and your parents continue to Oh, that's a way of And what? The thing, the thing that the run from smart parent is trying to do is let you know when it's safe to start connections. Right. And I have a patch for this in Pajaras that I have posted to the list, and again, I'm going to use it, where to solve a different problem, which is that you somehow have to guess a display number and hope that it works. There's a much better solution here. You have the X server run through, try to bind sockets until it succeeds, proceed with the rest of the initialization, and once it's done, it write the display number back out on the pipe. So that you can tell the difference between X fail, GDN can tell the difference between X fail to start because that display number is already in use, and X fail to start because it's the misconfiguration. You can solve both of these problems with this. Right out on the basic but it's standard out. We have, well, it's not standard out because we're already on file but it's dash display at the five, and then that open file descriptor gets written to at the, the run from smart parent point. Nice. Yeah. What, what do you think? Is that a for the box, it breaks the API of this stuff, but you know, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the display manager and this Well, they just wouldn't get us. They wouldn't. They, you wouldn't be breaking them, right? Because they wouldn't have this argument. You, they just wouldn't get a signal because you're running the X the server as a non-privileged user. Alternatively, X could start up this route, and then when you log in, X could, you know, uh, set new ID to the other source of my ID. Do that on Slayer. We have a pipe where GDM tells us when you log in, what username you authenticated as, and then we set ID to that. Until then, I don't know. So what do you do about if multiple people log in on their other box or once? Uh, well, you, GDM, there's a pipe from GDM to each X server it starts, so if there's multiple people log in, they start their next server. And how do you demultiply the input correctly? Um, we have a, we, when you VT switch, 
which we have an eye off to tell our kernel to give up to release the input devices in this X server. Uh, yeah, right. who, makes that, who makes that eye off to call? The server. So you, the server is trusted even though it's running with the user's UI. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'm fine with that. That, from, an, from an audience perspective, that's way, way better. Because all I have to know is, will this always happen? No. And I mean, because, that, because the assumption now is that the, the X server is no longer trusted code. If you remove the notion of X being trusted in the system, because the user can connect to the X server, and we assume the user can run arbitrary code in the X server's address space. Because no longer trusted, those are, these are different things. Um, Actually, you're right. Feed tracing, I had thought. <laughs> right? Feed tracing. Okay, yeah. So, so this this doesn't this is less secure than running the X server group in terms of being able to um, uh, read people's people keystrokes and other. Right, because now that you're that user, they can attach. So it does actually need to run as its own user. Yeah. It needs to run. The X server does need to run not as the user. And because all of the X servers are running as <coughs> the same user, because the user can run arbitrary code in the X server's address space through some security hole of the protocol, now all of the X servers are running as the same user, and you still have the same attack that you can do better. I'm not actually sure that that. I'm and not entirely sure that's all, but I'll, I'll let it slide. <laughs> yeah. So I want the X server to run as the regular user and have no. So um, one further, there is one further advantage of the approach of having the console kit or equivalent open the input device and hand the results to the X server. Do you have a point about that? Yeah, that, that on systems where you don't have this notion of revoke, if your kernel doesn't support that, um, then you can have your console kit like thing create a pipe and do the dispatch itself. Oh, and like your system like does server plan. And Sorry. if it does. I don't, I don't really care about fixing systems that I can't fix the kernel in. That's not interesting to me. Other people might. No, I don't. No, I don't. It, no, you fix the system at the root cause. You don't put it in. Right. We can fix any system that's interesting. We can put the fix in the right place. So the one, the one other problem with making the X server something sufficiently unfairly is that to start another one, does it switch? Switching to the front still kind of needs to be a privileged operation. The console kit tells you who gets to own the scan. I think that's true. This is, this is really what Wayne does. Wayne gives you input and output. It arbitrates two things. And I don't want to go through another process to get the stuff on the screen. Right? The problem with having a root Wayland server is that now when I want to do, when I want to paint stuff on the screen, I'm we'll sending it to one Wayland server, we'll send it to another Wayland server. Every time I want to paint anything on the screen. So how, let's continue then. How are you going to switch one X to another by its being a G? Well, at that point, then the one X server tells the Wayland server, it's your scan app, have a party, and then negotiate the no, you can't have one way to you can't give this front end option one way to do it not. You can't just expose the information to the Why not? Because they can't access the other part within two different sessions. We do that. No, 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 you have a meta Wayland Wayland server yeah, that runs saying. transiently to do the animation and then goes away again. Well, it's practically transient because when you're running to the next server, you just forward the input and the output is going directly to the screen and the, the If I want to do swap buffers, I have to the other way server. And I always want to do swap buffers. Yes. The, the other way server will control the DRAM for the most API yeah. for you. So you do swap buffers. But yes. Do, yes. So every time I want to do swap buffers, I'm doing another context. Yes. Right now, right now with X, you run X and a repository. You've got two processes in, in the new anyway. You know, you're, I, I, don't, I don't really don't understand what you're okay. Now you're going to give me three processes. I'm having my. No. If you run Wayland on Wayland, you have two processes. Yeah, if I run X on Wayland with a compositing manager, I have three. You're adding a process to whatever system I'm pushing it at. And I really don't think you have any problems. 